Hello YouTubers and Lime Warriors. Today I'm going to be reviewing a few blood smear videos again. I will hopefully provide proof that what we're seeing are in fact spirochetes. During the first part of the video I will be displaying a few arrows and when you see them I am simply asking what are these objects? What are we witnessing? Now I first became interested in microscopy when I became chronically sick. I had symptoms prior to going chronic but I did not realize that at the time. I actually got bit in 1995 and I had no symptoms for about six to seven years. And then gradually and very slowly and unsuspectedly, I started to get headaches each week. Uh, sometimes it would be one to two times per week, then one to two led to three or four, and then eventually it was most times out of the weeks so I would have headaches. Accompanying uh, that would be tiredness and this extreme fatigue and exhaustion. Some 12 years later, I finally got consistent stomach pains. 15 years later, shortness of breath and other weird symptoms. And by the 16th year, it was as if somebody had flipped a switch. So this led me to ask the people, friends, and family around me about Lyme. And at the end, I couldn't believe just how many people had gotten bit who had Lyme and who had Lyme. I just couldn't believe it. Now my symptoms, they didn't scream Lyme. I didn't have arthritis or many of the other symptoms that Lymeys complain about. Uh, but I was getting worse and worse. And I got to a point where I couldn't stand up and walk because I had so much head pain and head pressure. It was just unbearable. So I had to take action. And I sought out a Lyme literate medical doctor. And based upon family history, exposure to ticks, people in my neighborhood who were getting bit, we concluded that more likely that I have one. So we started IV antibiotics. So long story short, the IV receptor worked. I was finally able to get up on my feet again. The majority of those head pressure headaches dwindled away. But over time, the IV receptor wore off, and week after week I would get more and more Lyme-like symptoms to the point where I can say, yeah, this is definitely Lyme. At that point, I already had a microscope, and I would check my blood here and there, and I would spend hours and days doing it. Sometimes I'd let it be for a few days, sometimes I'd let it be for a week, sometimes a little bit longer, and I would check, and I would check, and I would check, but I could never find anything. At best, I could see a dancing dot, which resembled, in comparison to the size of the red blood cells was more likely a platelet, nothing more. I didn't see all these dancing spirochetes or strings, if you want to call them. I didn't see all these other mor morphological forms. I simply did not see them, and I hunted. I even had a family member take me to a, a naturalist who coincidentally did my scrap, my microscopy. He did 25, 30 minutes worth on me, and he couldn't find anything using a dart field. That was just sheer coincidence. Um, so my blood was clean, but as I got sicker, as I developed more and more mind-like symptoms, I started to see these things in my blood. Initially, just here and there, evidence uh, of it being in my blood. And eventually, to this date, it is simply everywhere. I don't even need to use the oil immersion vacuum seal method. Now, I just simply put a drop of blood smear and I see them. I see them starting to come out. The more I wait, the more it come out, but I see them right away. So I don't know who else has this unique perspective of, uh, of being able and, and having done microscopy on their own line and effect itself and having done it for this amount of time. And, and at the end, trying to show proof that, yeah, this is, in fact, what is going on. For myself, I already know. I know what reality is. I don't need to prove it to myself. I'm trying to prove it to everybody else and, and help educate everybody else, as I know many other and more experienced people are trying to do it. Now, with all that being said, let's discuss the video in front of us. That looks to me like a ruptured red blood cell or white blood cell, possibly both. Perhaps the top part is a red blood cell that's been compromised, and the bottom is a completely disrupted white blood cell. Now you see a lot of these large 
specs. I pointed them out as cysts. There's specs in there that could be plebs, could be lysosomes, but the larger ones. Sometimes you see these white blood cells and you see the specs in there, but uh, some of the specs are larger. They look abnormal and they don't look uh, uh, what you would typically find. Uh, from my past observations, I've seen some of these specs burst out into these spirochetes, these long strings. And that's exactly what's happening here. Some of these uh, strings of pearls are developing from these cysts. Now, I've seen the string of pearls from my blood smears, my own personal observations since 2011. Although I didn't call them that, I referred to them as studded Borrelia and those individual studs spores. Um, I actually made a video in 2012 and I'll put a link down below. I'll call it link number one. And this was actually before Alan McDonald's video came out. And once that came out and I saw exactly what he was describing, exactly what I had seen, it was vindication. It was so beautiful to have somebody else, you know, professional come out and admit to this and openly educate the public. It was, it was such a great feeling. So what are cysts? Cysts are nothing more than coiled up and protected versions of the spirochete. And they can, the cysts can vary in size and dimensions, all depending on the length of the spirochete and where exactly it coils. It can coil in any number of locations. So what are blebs then? Blebs are the smallest unit of the spirochete. It's the smallest unit that can potentially become a new whole spirochete and continue to cause infection. It is basically a packet or an envelope that encloses DNA or RNA. In that respect, it behaves more like a virus, although it's larger in size. Now, blebs can form one or two locations. They can uh, form on the entire length of the spirochete, regardless if the spirochete is small, medium, large, extra uh, long. And they can also form at the tips. You'll see some of these spirochetes with bulbous tips, with those bulbous tips can give rise to new blebs, and in essence, eventually, new spirochetes. And we've seen video proof of this. Now let's fast forward this video and get to the juicy parts. Now I have video here. It's 2 hours and 45 minutes worth of video taken as time lapse in 15 second intervals. And it's playing back at 2 frames per second. I'm also speeding it up four times so this way we can get a better feel of what's going on with these long spirochetes. And if you look closely over the next few seconds, you can tell that the spirochetes are developing into the string of pearls. They're becoming more studded or dotted. In a few seconds we're going to also stop and slow this down so we can look at it frame by frame. So, midway into this video, my microphone, my new microphone came in, and hopefully I sound better with it. Uh, look at that arrow. We have a string of pearl spirochete that broke off. Notice the length before, and now it's shrinking up. It's curling up on itself, trying to become a cyst. In trying to do that, it looks like it broke apart into two pieces, perhaps even smaller sections of it as well. So here we have a condition where a string of pearl spirochete tries to form a cyst. Wow, I don't think I've seen this one before. This is the first time I've seen this or have heard of this myself. Now in the oncoming minutes, there's another example of another string of pearls uh, forming a cyst and it, it stays complete. So that's a little bit of a better example. And that Medusa um, collection it seems to come from a red blood cell I believe it's got the look and consistency of a red blood cell um, this is, happens to be a red blood cell that's been highly infected it looks like and also you know I mentioned the white blood cells you know the white blood cells at times will go around picking up spirochetes and you'll see these larger cysts uh, floating within them and I've seen them break apart come out and become whole new spirochetes and you'll get this medusa effect with white blood cells rupturing with, with, with 
when, when they do carry a number of cysts. Now we're going to speed up the video to see the, uh, the further breakup of this Medusa colony. And notice how some of the spirochetes are gradually becoming string of pearls or more defined string of pearls. Notice also the uh, arrow again points to a release string of pearls and it also has a bend and a little dot in its center reminiscent of the L form of version of the spirochete. Shortly this will close up on itself and form a cyst as well. Let's pay uh, attention to that. So why? Why, why, why in a blood-borne disease will we not suspect that the blood could carry large quantities of bacteria? A very small tick has to bite a mammal, such as a mouse, chipmunk, squirrel, or deer, and consume only a fraction of its total blood volume. Now where on the mammal would we expect bacteria to be? Well, my first few guesses would be either the epidermis, the dermis, the capillary walls, or the blood. My suspicions would be strongest in what it consumes the most of, which is the blood. And which is why it has led me to look at, look at it more closely. Personally, when I look at the blood from a normal person versus a person who has been bitten or has Lyme, I can tell which comes from which. Yes, the normal person's blood has dancing platelets, lysosomes, and artifacts that make you wonder but it does not compare to the blood of a person that has Lyme, especially in those where you actually see the spirochetes and you see them dancing and gyrating around. Moreover, when I compare my blood with others around me who were bit, I find that my blood is more horrific. It explains why I have so many more symptoms and why I have been hit hard chronically. The blood microscopy tells the story. And especially if you have witnessed the gradual progression in the blood over time such as I have. Look at the clear plasma field marked with X's closest to the Medusa collection and notice that before there were very little pieces of artifacts or cut up curled up in morph Borrelia forms that represents the infinite morphological combinations. Notice how over time the spirals break up into such different pieces and litter the blood plasma. Once this video is over, go back and look at the clear field before and then after and just see for yourself. What we have witnessed here is why some of the Lyme blood looks so horrific and riddled with artifacts. It is because the spirochetes break up into the infinite forms in order to continue their spread and infection. Sure, some of the artifacts are indeed artifacts and come from human cells, while many of them are actually spirochetal pieces. Now I have noticed a pattern with Lyme blood observations. Typically when first viewing a blood smear, the blood looks fine, it looks normal and healthy. One may find a few stray spirochetes, blebs or cysts out in the blood plasma, but not as many as what is to come. Now I've also been surprised with one individual where they were on two different antibiotics and I could see scattered spirochetes in the blood plasma promptly after the blood smear. So this does and can happen. But normally, as the blood is left out, each hour for the next 24 hours or so, one can expect to gradually see more and more spirochetes come out to the blood plasma. They are hiding in the red blood cells and are invisible via normal standard power microscopy when they are within the red blood cells. And where there's no intentional modification to the blood, nothing was added or subtracted, it's just a direct smear on the slide. In certain individuals, they can also be seen as cysts in the white blood cells. So once they're in the white blood cells, they can potentially be seen as cysts. Within 24 to 48 hours, one can progressively see more scattered Borrelia artifacts. In about 60 hours or so, more of the spirochetes in the blood plasma, they just mysteriously disappear. They're just gone. But the plasma is littered with artifacts. So as the spirochetes disappear from the blood plasma, more and more of these mysterious floating debris. Well, this last Medusa time lapse can give us a glimpse as to why we see so many artifacts, many of which come from Borrelia. It was designed 
over millions of years of evolution to do just that so effectively is to spread sometimes the time frames are shifted and take a little longer and this may be due to the condition of the blood antibiotics herb usage what was eaten digested and so forth and the way the particular smear degrades over time so each time this may be a little different it might offset the time frames and there are certain times where you expect to see this pattern and for some reason you don't and this I mean there are other factors involved to recap what have we learned here the dancing strings are indeed spirochetes and they don't necessarily have to have that textbook style corkscrew spiral movement the very same spirochete can be made to spiral all depending on how aqueous the solution is our blood is very thick and Borrelia will not behave the way we have seen it behave in more watered down BSK solution. We have seen the Medusa collection coming from either an infected red blood cell or ruptured white blood cell. We have proof of them blebbing, creating the string of pearls. We see evidence of them emerging from cysts. We see evidence of the string of pearls forming cyst and breaking up into the many forms and dispersing in the blood. Now I purposely started the video out slow, giving a chance for the Lyme denialist to dismiss the earlier part of the video, and then gradually I led up to the proof. Hopefully, they now at least have a more open mind. Did it look like the earlier part of the video were just scattered artifacts and debris? Can we see how the dancing strings are indeed spirochetes forming bleb cysts and many other morphologies? So if you are a denialist after this video, then I dare you to take a drop of my blood and inject it into you. I dare you. Just one drop. I hope this video has been helpful and thanks for watching.